Tokyo Electric Power Company has begun using unmanned heavy equipment to remove radioactive rubble at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant. Hydrogen explosions in mid-March blew off the ceilings and walls of the number one and number three reactor buildings. The debris is emitting hundreds of millisieverts of radiation per hour in some places, hindering the restoration work. The utility started using remote-controlled power shovels and bulldozers to remove the rubble on Sunday afternoon. A lead-covered mobile operating room will be used for places that cannot be reached by radio waves. TEPCO says the rubble will be put into containers and stored at the plant under strict supervision, as it may be contaminated with high levels of radiation. Heavily contaminated water in turbine buildings and a concrete tunnel is also hampering the task of restoring the reactor's cooling uh, functions. As of Sunday morning, highly radioactive water was only 92 centimeters from the top of the concrete tunnel at the number two reactor. The utility plans to begin transferring the water from the tunnel into the reactor's condenser. Demonstrators staged a rally in Tokyo on Sunday to call for the closure of all nuclear power plants in Japan. <laughs> The protest was organized by eight anti-nuclear groups following the disastrous events at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant. The organizers say about 2,000 people took part in the demonstration. The protesters marched more than four kilometers. They urged the government to make a policy shift to use alternative energy resources and shut down every nuclear power plant in Japan. Outside the industry ministry and the headquarters of Tokyo Electric Power Company, the demonstrators called on the government and the firm to take more responsibility for what happened at the Fukushima plant. They also demanded that the Hamaoka nuclear plant in Shizuoka prefecture should be shut down, saying it too could easily be damaged by tsunami. About 40 divers searched the harbor and coastal waters of Shinchi town for the first time. At Tsurushihama port, a team of eight SDF divers repeatedly went underwater. 66 bodies had been found by 4 p.m. local time. A similar operation conducted for three days from April 1st recovered 339 bodies. Japan's government says it will withheld computer projections indicating high levels of radioactivity in areas more than 30 kilometers from the troubled Fukushima Daiichi power plant due to inaccurate data. An institute commissioned by the government made the estimates using a computer system called Speedy on March 16th after explosions at the plant. The system estimated that people who remained outdoors for 24 hours in Itate village, some 40 kilometers from the plant, would be exposed to radiation exceeding 100 millisieverts. The projections were based on the assumption that radioactive substances had been released for 24 hours on March 15th. The government's Nuclear Safety Commission says it did not release the projections because the locations or amount of radioactive leakage was not specified at the time. The number of children who lost parents, who lost both parents in the massive quake and tsunami on March 11th amounted to 82 in three northeastern prefectures. Japan's health ministry says that as of Saturday, 44 children in Iwate, 30 in Miyagi, and eight in Fukushima had been orphaned by the disaster. It says the number could rise as there are many children whose parents are still unaccounted for. The health and education ministries have instructed education boards and school officials across the country to notify child consultation centers about children orphaned by the disaster. The health ministry will continue to survey the number of quake and tsunami orphans and their living conditions before it draws up measures to assist them. Monday marks exactly one month since a magnitude 9 earthquake struck northeastern Japan at 2.46 p.m. on March 11th. The Great East Japan earthquake was the largest quake on record to hit the country. Areas along the Pacific coast in the Tohoku region were devastated by the tremor and the more than 10-meter tsunami waves that followed. Many have lost their homes, jobs and loved ones and are facing the challenge of rebuilding their lives. Kesa Show 
According to the National Police Agency, the death toll from the great earthquake and tsunami, including the deaths from the April 7 aftershock, is 13,013. And including the number of people reported missing to the police, the figure stands at 27,621. However, Sendai and two other municipalities in Miyagi that were devastated by the tsunami cannot figure out the exact number of missing people. Also, search operation within the 20-kilometer exclusion zone around the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power, power, uh, nuclear power plant has been hampered, and the number of deaths and missing people can rise. And right now, 151,115 people are living in evacuation shelters. Many people are now returning home. However, many people have to stay in the evacuation shelters. And securing privacy for the people in the shelter is another issue. The focus now is the construction of temporary housing for survivors. According to the land ministry, disaster hit prefectures have requested for roughly 62,000 houses to be built. But only about 13 percent of the required number is under construction right now or have plans to be started soon. One major obstacle is a shortage of land, especially in the submerged areas. According to the NHK survey, of 37 municipalities in Miyagi, Iwate, and Fukushima. Seven municipalities have said they already secured land for temporary housing. Fourteen say they expect to secure land by next month. Six say that they will be able to secure land from the summer toward the year end. And However, nine said that they have no, no prospect of securing land or that they didn't know how they will secure land. Many evacuees are scattered in cities outside of the quake-hit areas. About 23,000 people are staying in shelters outside of Miyagi, Iwate, or Fukushima prefectures. Most of them fled Fukushima after the accident at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant. They have no idea when they will be able to return to their homes. how weird it starts to get when you just stop breathing. 